The Delahaye Type 175 is a luxury, bespoke, coach-built automobile manufactured by French automotive product manufacturer Delahaye. Production build numbers were formally recorded from early 1948 to mid-1951, validating that 107 cars were built. This run of 4.5-liter chassis was offered in a variety of styles, exclusively built by coachbuilders. Delahaye did not have its own coachbuilding capability. A 1953 fire in the administration and drawing offices destroyed most of its files and technical drawings. Little is known about the Type 175 and its siblings, the sequentially longer wheelbase Types 178 and 180. Club Delahaye has recorded 25 surviving cars, out of the 107 confirmed built. There were 51 Type 175 cars, most being the optional 175S variant. There were 38 Type 178 cars, at least one of which was factory built with both 175S options that were not offered on that model. There were 18 Type 180 cars, two of which have the optional 175S engine, both being heavily armored chaperon bodied limousines. The Type 165, a 4.5-liter, V12 engine, grand touring car, elevated Delahaye's pre-war prestige to the pinnacle. But it was a flash in the pan that could not economically be sustained. The Type 165 was replaced by the 4.5-liter Type 175, in early 1948. Managing director Charles Weifenbach had planned to debut the Type 175 at the October 1939 Paris Auto Salon to sustain the momentum generated by the discontinued Type 165, of which just four were built. The Paris Salon was where Delahaye wrote most of its purchase orders, but the venue was cancelled without notice, due to an impending German invasion. The shareholders had decided that a simpler, practical, 4.5-liter engine, one liter larger than the Type 135, but familiar to Delahaye's workers, accompanied by a new, state-of-the-art chassis was to supersede the impractical Type 165, and replace the Types 134, 135, 138 and 148 L by 1940. That, however, did not occur as France was plunged into war in early June 1940. The prototype evolved beyond its initial 1939 guise and was finally presented to the shareholders for production approval in March 1944. The four-wheel independent suspension was a first for Delahaye, and it was the first Delahaye to be built exclusively in left-hand drive. Testing of the untried and unproven mechanicals was not yet possible, due to the ongoing German occupation of Paris and the factory. The introduction had to await the belated return of the Paris Auto Salon, in October 1946. The new model would have been state-of-the-art modern, had it debuted in 1939. It was less so, eight years later, yet, it was one of the few new lines there. After the war, the types 135 and 148L had to be reintroduced, to generate cash flow. The company's Delage D670 model continued as it was before the war, but the straight-eight engine Delage D8120 was discontinued. Delahaye's directors could not allow its large displacement Delage to compete against the Types 175, 178 and 180. The Type 175 had a naturally aspirated, 4.5-liter, overhead valve, inline six-cylinder engine, with seven rather than four main bearings, and a 12-port cylinder head instead of nine ports. The chassis featured Dubonnet independent front suspension built under license, an independent de Dion rear suspension system, large diameter, deeply finned drums on a dual Lockheed hydraulic brake system, a four-speed, semi-automatic codal transmission manufactured by MOG, left-hand drive for the first time by Delahaye, and 18-inch wheels. The chassis, with its cockpit floor welded as a stressed structural member, on the bottom, rather than on top of the chassis, had exceptional strength and torsional rigidity. Developmental evolution was set back by the unexpected death of chief design engineer Jean-Francois, in April 1944. Delahaye had nobody qualified to assume his role. His absence resulted in extended delays, Delahaye Le Grand Livre by Jacques Dorazon and co-authors, causing Delahaye to resort to trial and error experimentation while still building somewhat outdated pre-war designs to generate revenue. Six pre-production chassis became known about by 1946, to the specifically involved factory workers, senior management, the directors, and, a few with insider's knowledge. The other was not numbered, being the distinctive Paris Auto Salon show chassis, that was incompletely assembled, to represent the optional Type 175S. 
The first three numbers referred to type 175 units, and the latter two, prefixed 920, represented the type 178. There was no precursor to the type 180. The six were built sequentially and were not precisely replicated. Each had alterations made for improved manufacturing and profitability. The unique entity the directors approved in March 1944, predated the six pre-production units by about two years. That time was required for experiments and testing, from September 1944, until November 1945. Of the 51 cars built on the short, 2.95-meter wheelbase type 175 chassis, 12 cars reportedly exist, most being the optional variant with three Solex 40 AIP carburetors and chromed Rudge Woodworth wire wheels. Those were the only factory options, limited to the Type 175S, but exceptions were made. Of the 38 Type 178s built on the median length, 3.15-meter wheelbase chassis, seven are recorded as surviving. And, of the 18 long, 3.35 meters wheelbase Type 180 chassis, six survive. Charles Weifenbach, the managing director of operations, who ran the company single-handedly since his appointment in 1906, devised the intentionally confused reference number strategy. His objective was to obfuscate the identity of the six evolutionary forerunners, and, the prototype. All seven would be surreptitiously liquidated, in early 1948, to recover some of the corporate developmental investment. The post-war front design was created by in-house industrial designer Philippe Charbonneau, who developed the distinctive Delahaye face. His effort provided the design of the entire front with a narrower, elongated, heart-shaped grille with horizontal bars, and low horizontal grilles on each side. Delahaye required its coachbuilders to use the new frontal aspect although coachbuilders Joseph Figoni, Henri Chapron, Jacques Sauchik, and Marcel Pertou, obtained authorized artistic license. Although production officially started in early 1948 as announced, there were six pre-production units by 1946, known to select factory workers and those with insider's knowledge. There was also the experimental prototype that was the only example built in strict accordance with chief design engineer Jean-Francois preliminary engineering drawings and specifications. Fernand Lacour, proprietor of the Wilson Garage, was a performance consultant to Delahaye. The six early units were referred to as 90,001, 91,001, 91,002, 92,001, 92,002, and the glitzy 1946 to 1949 Paris Auto Salon show chassis, presented in optional Type 175S guys. The Type 175, 178, 180th prototype was not one of those six, having predated them by over two years, and kept aside for developmental reference. It was not numbered, nor otherwise identified, since as a prototype it was a one-off, unique, aberration. The prototype was eventually identified through research and discovered provenance documentation in 2014. Managing Director Weifenbach cleverly devised the intentionally convoluted reference number strategy to obscure the identity of the pre-production units, to differentiate them from the prototype. It took decades to determine Weifenbach's strategy, to arrive at conclusions about what happened to the early pre-production chassis and the prototype. All six evolutionary units were liquidated, having been formally stamped with production build numbers. All six were homologation tested, certified, registered, and licensed as bespoke, coach-built cars. The prototype seemingly vanished without a trace. It was finally recognized in 2012, when it was discovered that the Type 178 chassis, stamped as 820,001, was the long-lost, missing link, after World War II. The second-generation 4.5-liter series was to address the export market ostensibly in North America, under the five-year economic revitalization strategy known as the Pons Plan, Delahaye's second-generation 4.5-liter engine was an overhead valve, inline, six-cylinder, similar to the preceding Type 135 in format, but a liter larger in displacement. It was an improvement over the successful Type 135 engine, in having seven main bearings versus four, and a 12-port instead of nine-port cylinder head. Unlike the cast iron block and head of prior models, the 4.5-liter engine had a cast aluminum block and cast iron head, separated by a copper and asbestos head gasket. The standard compression ratio was 6.5 to 1, but that was enhanced in the optional Type 175S, that was fitted with three Solex carburetors, instead of one, and wire wheels. By 1946, 
those familiar with Delahaye knew of the six pre-production units. But those six excluded the developmental experiment that was presented to the shareholding directors in March 1944 by Charles Weifenbach, in the unavoidable absence of chief design engineer Jean-Francois, for production approval. The prototype remained unidentified, it was superseded when the first and second pre-production units, reference numbers 90001 and 91001, were sequentially fabricated in late 1945, in type 275S specification. The 1946-1949 Paris Auto Salon Type 175S show chassis was the fourth of the six built, but was not operational, there being no fuel line, electrical equipment, mechanical linkages, and switches. The new 175, 178-180th series chassis introduced the semi-monocoque concept. These units were completely different from the foregoing Type 135 and its several longer wheelbase iterations, in width, proportions, and structure. The stressed steel floor pan, welded integrally around the bottom perimeter of the passenger compartment. The chassis was dramatically larger, and heavier, than the Type 135. It had parallel side rails, and these longitudinal members were boxed, instead of open channels. Type 135145, 148L, and 165 frame rails tapered from the aft cockpit crossmember forward, whereas the three new models' cockpits were parallel sided rectangles, setting the precedent. The types 135 billion 145 million 148,155, and 165 had the identical, proprietary, independent front suspension system shared with Delage and Talbot. In contrast, the all-new 4.5-liter chassis employed an innovative, sophisticated, but unfamiliar, independent front suspension, being the recently introduced Dubonnet system, licensed to Delahaye by the inventor. Dubonnet's system was in use prior to the Delahaye, having been licensed to General Motors two years before, in 1933, as well as by Alfa Romeo, Simca, and Vauxhall. After WW2, only Vauxhall and Delahaye retained the Dubonnet system. Others had moved on to the unequal length A-arm system, pioneered by Cadillac head engineer Maurice Ali. The GMC system was licensed by Rolls-Royce, for its Phantom 111 and Wraith model, and its subsequent post-war Silver Dawn, Silver Wraith and Bentley MK6 models. Dubonnet systems proved problematic, and less fastidiously maintained. Oil seal leaks caused seizures and suspension collapses. Accidental damages were sustained by an undisclosed number of early cars in the 175, 178-180th series. Parts failure reports doomed the new series to failure, irreparably damaging Delahaye's long-respected reputation. The excessive weight of traditional hardwood body frames clad in mild steel paneled, hand-hammered and welded coachwork, mounted atop these already heavy chassis adversely affected acceleration and speed, while compromising handling. French coachbuilders employed antiquated, traditional, building methods and common materials. They were almost universally oblivious to weight. Only Henri Chapron and Olivier Lacanu de Champ were familiar with forming and welding aluminum. Other French coachbuilders were creating their bodies with hand-hammered and welded steel sheets mechanically fastened over hardwood body frames. Consequently, they were inordinately heavy, and contributed to mechanical failures experienced by an estimated dozen early purchasers. Broken suspension components resulted in Delahaye being obliged to buy back the offending cars, at considerable expense, to circumvent litigation and negative publicity. The Type 175S racing engines Delahaye developed for Charles Pazzi and racing team Ikiri Lutetia co-owner and French champion driver Eugène Chabaud, reportedly had a 9.1 to 1 compression ratio, which with three Stromberg dual-choke carburetors, delivered over 220 brake horsepower. These two 4.5-liter displacement race cars were parallel in horsepower to three of the four Type 145 cars, 48,772, 48,773, and 48,775. The more highly tuned number 48,771, after Fernand Lacour's efforts, developed a recorded 244.8 horsepower. The Type 175S model had just two factory options, Rudge wire spoke wheels, and three Solex 40 AIP down draft carburetors. Coachbuilders addressed everything else a customer desired or specified. The new 4.5 liter engine carried the 183 casting code. The motors were built in two distinct forms. The initial engines were stamped Type 1 Alabama 183, 
as found in all six pre-production units known about by 1946, and the two Type 175S racing engines that Delahaye loaned to Charles Pazzi and his Ikiri Lutetia co-owning teammate, Eugene Chabaud. Three Type 175S racing engine competition coupes were built for Jean Trevoux, 815,042, 815,050 and 815,051. The 175S racing engines numbered no more than five. Most production motors were stamped Type 2 Alabama 183, auto historians Andre Vaucourt, and Jean-Paul Tiso. These came out of revised casting mold, 183. Modifications were made for production efficiency, cost-effectiveness, and alleged crankcase reinforcement. After having spent four years of World War II building railroad rolling stock parts for German trains, Delahaye was then included in Deputy Director General Paul-Marie Pons' 1945 Plan Pons for French Industry and Engineering. This was a five-year program to rebuild French industry, and source incoming capital for French companies. The plan designated Delahaye to build sports and luxury cars for the export market, to generate foreign currency. Over 80% of the company's automobile chassis were exported to France's colonies, including in Africa and Asia. In consideration of the expense of producing the complicated, unreliable, impractical V12 used in the four Type 145 sports racers, and the Type 155 monoposto, all five V12 race cars were made exclusively for Lucy O'Reilly Skell for her Team Mercury Blue, as well as the four Type 165 Grand Touring cars. V12 production ended in late 1938, with 12 sets of engine parts made, resulting in those nine cars. The V12 was replaced by a new, conventional, less complex, inline, overhead valve, six cylinder engine of the same 4.5 liter engine displacement. The show chassis debuted in optionally equipped Type 175S form, with a partially built body by Le Tourneur and Marchand, introducing Delahaye's new post-war face. It was one of the few new machines at the first post-war Paris Auto Salon, in October 1946. It garnered considerable attention, and Delahaye's first model to be manufactured exclusively in left-hand drive. The chassis was neither fully developed nor adequately tested by October 1946, before parts were put into production in late November 1947. Problems with the Dubonnet front suspension soon became apparent. Disgruntled owners experienced parts failures and sustained accidental damages. Delahaye was obliged to buy back an undisclosed number of defective cars, at great expense to the company, to defuse litigation and curtail negative publicity. The mechanically and structurally unchanged show chassis reappeared on Delahaye's stand in 1947, 1948, and 1949 for the final time, each year with minor additions made to freshen the partial forward coachwork. The extended delivery delay, into early 1948, instead of 1946, was due to chief design engineer Jean-Francois unanticipated death, in April 1944. Delahaye had nobody qualified to take his place. The production build number list verified that 51 Type 175 chassis were built, 815,001 to 815,051, including the Type 175 S show chassis, that was cycled back into production, after the October 1949 show. It likely went into the tail end of Type 175S production. While not a success in the marketplace, a Type 175S won the 1951 Monte Carlo Rally. This car, 815,042, finished 12th in the Carrera Panamericana, while a second motto bodied 175S Coupe, 815,051, was disqualified on a technicality. The optional 175S had three Solex 40 AIP carburetors and rudge wire spoke wheels, but was otherwise identical to the standard Type 175, with a short, 2.95 meters wheelbase. The other two longer wheelbased versions were the Types 178 and 180, with a single Solex carburetor and stamped steel wheels. The standard 175 had a reported 140 horsepower with 161 horsepower for the 175S. The production build list confirms there were 38 of the 3.15 meters wheelbase type 178 chassis, and 18 of the 3.35 meter type 180, built in 180, 333.5 centimeters, mainly for heads of state, dignitaries, corporate executives, and the like. Two Chapron armored type 180 limousines were built for the leaders of the French Communist Party in 1948. A prototype, 
Dell Edge D180, was also developed on this basis, but was not put into production. Delahaye focused its Dell Edge production on the D670 model, total production of three chassis series, including the prototype, and the show chassis, was 107 automobiles. The rear-wheel drive type 175, 178 and 180 chassis is considerably more sophisticated than its type 135 predecessor. The independent front suspension had horizontally pivoting cylindrical housings that contained a coil spring and hydraulic shock absorber immersed in an oil bath Dubonnet. The rear was by Didion, with semi-elliptical springs. Brakes were dual-system hydraulic by Lockheed. The brake drums were deeply thinned cast iron, actuated by dual master cylinders with a balance bar. The custom bodies of these cars were often much too heavy for what the chassis had originally been engineered for. In dry conditions, they were fast cars, but wet weather handling was unpredictable. Another culprit was inferior quality of high tensile strength steel in the early post-war era. The specified grade was depleted by the war, and what little was produced was allocated by the French government, which did not prioritize luxury carmakers. The types 175, 178 and 180 ceased production in 1951. Although Delahaye managed to introduce the Type 235 in 1951, it was only an updated variation of the Type 135. Delahaye and Delage combined production dropped from 511 in 1949 to 41 in 1952 and 36 in 1953. In desperation to salvage the company after the devastating 1953 fire, managing director Weifenbach tried to amalgamate with various French automakers, to no avail. He eventually orchestrated a Delahaye shareholder-approved merger, as the minority partner, with Hotchkiss. Delahaye, and Delage, closed down for good on December 31, 1954. Hothkiss in turn merged with weapons manufacturers Brandt in 1956.